burst your bubble or uh, I don't want to in any way interfere with your energy but I, I have found and I've been actually studying this since uh, Columbine which happened in 1999 I, I consider myself I don't know if I'm a survival expert but I took a different perspective ever since Columbine because what people don't realize in Columbine is that those two individuals came into the into the high school and they set up propane tanks that they had set up as bombs and the only reason why 500 or 600 kids weren't killed is because they, they were not sophisticated enough to detonate them. So I understand your energy, but understand but that, that's not going to be the only answer. The other thing I find is people don't even know what a magazine is. I mean the kind that you read. Yes, I understand, but everybody's talking about magazines and this is a magazine. This is an eight, eight bullet magazine. It goes in this gun here. And if you ban all assault weapons, okay, I have one in the chamber and eight in the magazine. Cho from Virginia Tech, I thought it interesting that uh, a survivor spoke there. Cho went in with handguns. Cho had 200 or 400 bullets at his disposal. I always say to my people, and we train all the time in how to respond mm -hmm. to an active shooter. I can change clips in about two and a half seconds. So. New York went to seven bullets. You carry ten magazines, they reduce it from ten to seven. I became a cop because I'm not really good at math. But <laughs> I still got 56 bullets in two and a half seconds times ten. I'm getting that off in 200, 250 seconds. So I just don't want to have a comfort zone. I'll tell you what I, what I have done over the course of the last 10 years, and that's Teach Survival. And I'm going to tell you something straight up. There's a great book, it's called The Unthinkable, and it's about how in the United States of America we've had an expectation that legislation and government is the answer, and we've kind of lost our ability to survive. I'm going to tell you straight up, if there was a fire or a shooting or a flood, half of you probably don't know that that door is an emergency exit, because we have not been trained to walk into a room and realize, and in Virginia Tech, which is a very sad case, and most of these cases are very sad because kids were killed where they lay, and there was an ability to flee, and we've lost our ability to survive our most basic instinct, which is to run away. Okay, so I want you to maintain the energy, but if you're going to work on getting rid of assault weapons, okay, I want you to think about how to survive. There's some amazing things about 9-11 and plane crashes. People do what is a habit to them. If I told you, get out of this building right away, because I hear pop, 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 I guarantee you three or four would reach for your back. And they found studies that, that people were doing. People died. In, at 9-11, one lady looked for her mystery novel. She was going around and around her desk. And if you want to teach anything to your kids, you teach them, and I teach my kids, two at Morristown High School. If you hear pop, 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 and some teacher tells you, sit in, in this room, don't listen. Like they've got a detention, don't listen. It's assess the situation, find out what the threat is, consider options. 99% of the time, it should be flee. It's a game that I play with people, I teach them how to survive. It's really easy. It's called Spot the Cop. Go to any restaurant, and look at the opening, look at the threshold. You can spot every police officer, male, female, young, old, because we are taught survival. I walk into a room, and I'm looking for my escape. I'm checking out my threat. I see the guy over there that was sitting off to the side for a while. I'm looking at you, buddy. I wonder why you're wearing a coat. Do you have a, jet, a gun under there? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but we do all this in a half a second. And I'm t I bet you, I tell you right now, if you heard pop, 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 I bet you most of you would drop to the ground instead of thinking about getting out that door. So from now on, I'm talking here. Okay. I'm not going to go on for a while. I feel it. I know you are. I'm not going to go on. I'm not going to make a question. You're going to give Christy a run? I just have a question for you. Go ahead. Don't you feel uh, somewhat of a threat to your officers by the proliferation of semi-automatic weapons in the community? The more I, of them I that do. are present, I would think I it would do. be a threat to you. Uh, it is absolutely a greater threat. Yeah.
But even as I tell my as I tell my officers, those that will carry guns train more than my officers. We are required to train four times a year. If you are Adam Lanza or you're the kids that went into Columbine or you're Cho, I guarantee you they were at the range a lot more. So yeah, I, do I feel a greater threat? Do I feel that some of this legislation is it better if, if someone has to load after seven versus versus after fifteen or thirty? I, I absolutely I can tell you law enforcement is going to the reduction of the magazines because it does take time to reload. Because I don't think you're ever going to get the assault weapons. If you, I was just listening yesterday to uh, the New York law, and it, it seems like they're defining an assault weapon, different types of assault weapons. They allowed one because it had a different pistol grip, and when, it, when, all, when all was said and done, it was the same exact type of assault weapon, but they weren't calling it an assault weapon, and all they did was change the pistol grip. So you might want to educate yourself as to what an assault weapon is and what they're actually banning. And I think that in this state, you can carry 15 in a magazine and still be legal. Sounds like so, we could use your help in helping to define some of these things, you know, for, well, the, for the people that are interested. In I, I, I will be more than happy to educate you and be available or have my firearms people. I will tell you something else that's amazing to me. I sign off on a firearms permit every day. There's, and in this town, if you want a firearms permit or a permit to purchase, go to the chief of police. And there's one other thing that really, really bothers me. What did each and every one of you have to do when you got your driver's license? Take a test. Take a test. I sign off on a piece of paper that says you have a clean background. Do you know how to load that weapon? Do you know how to keep it safe? Are you getting any safety instruction? Those are the things that bother me. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there are things we want to do at a macro level, uh, a policy level, but in the meanwhile, there's things we need to do right here, right now for our own children. Absolutely. And I think President of my school board's here. We ought to be having a dialogue about our own children and what we can do uh, while I, we're all doing all this big stuff. That's nice. Uh, you know, I've gone into each and every practice. school and I've told them straight up, I'm not a big fan of lockdown only. I think you need to train your teachers, depending on the level of, of the school children, to assess, consider options, take action, versus just sit in the room and wait for the police. Because it take, even in Morristown, it's going to take us three minutes. A lot of firepower in three and minutes. state troopers, didn't they have a hard time doing that in Lamba? Absolutely. Well, yeah, well, they had to shoot through the security yeah. door and... He had already, when he saw the first police officer, he took his own life, and he had already, he was going to do more, but yes. Um, could you speak to a resource officer in the schools? Uh, I put it, I do have a school resource officer at Morristown High School, big, big advocate of it, and I would love to have a school resource officer in every school, but you know, once these type of things fade away, then the energy to spend the money uh, kind of wanes. That's why we're here. It's more than a guard. It's more than a guard. It's more than a guard. And, and in fact, I wouldn't put a guard at the front door because the first thing you do is shoot that guard. Now I got two guns. So this is an officer that helps in social situations. And I think I have got. I don't think I've ever gotten as many compliments about a, a police officer doing their job as I do about Officer Deanna Dietrich, who's at Morristown High School and been so there we'll, since September. So when we talk about actions, we'll talk about ways to work at the school district. Sure. I'm just curious. I know you don't know everybody. But what do you think the percentage of people who own guns in Morristown? You know, I thought everybody had one. I've been chief eight years. I swear, I, swear, I do like three a week. Do them again. I'm not really good at math, but it seems like because by the way, I sign off on permits where you have three and four guns, and I. I it's got to be 40, it feels like. That would be the national 40 average, I think, What about semi-automatic? Um, that I, I couldn't even hazard a guess. It's hard to tell that, I guess, even for you. That somehow, and I think many of us feel that Newtown sort of changed everything. Like, if that didn't do it, what will? Um, but that we have seen, as we've had long power outages and hurricanes and disastrous snowstorms, everyone is furious, but then life goes on. So um, my hope is that this effort will be one that doesn't go on that long this time, but that it's important that we act very quickly. So the purpose of this meeting was to bring together interested people on short notice, and you all came together so quickly. That's really great. Pam and I stepped off and 
stepped up to just convene it so we can have this conversation. Um, but it's quickly geared toward action and pretty immediate action.